Hey team, hope you're all doing well. Today's topic is what is a normal heart rate while on a treadmill? And I got this question uh, recently from one of my subscribers named James. He asked, uh, he was talking about uh, training on the treadmill and you know versus training outdoors. So do you think runners would be better off running a bit faster inside on the treadmill or if they can stand running in the heat are there benefits to being outside but a bit slower? Yes, definitely. You want to always focus on training outdoors rather than indoors, but sometimes you just got to get on the treadmill, okay? If it's icy outside and it's dangerous, if it's extremely hot, if it's like over 110 degrees out or over 100 degrees out and you have a tempo run or a, tread or a, a, a track session that you had scheduled and you're really trying to hit some legitimate splits on you know on that on the track or on the roads and it's just too hot out it's always best to be smarter about your training and to get indoors and to get a solid workout in but it's in terms of heart rate a lot of athletes including myself over the years when I was earlier in my career we get a really hyped up and really fo too too focused at times on heart rate okay it is important to use a heart rate monitor uh, but to get a gauge of where you're where you're training, but heart rate is always going to be affected by various factors. Okay, if it's hot out, heart rate is drastically going to be changed. So your your pace has to be drastically slower, uh, and will be slower when you're training. If you're doing a tempo run outdoors in the heat, you always want to go off how your body feels. That's the most important thing, rather than just the heart rate itself. A good way, uh, and there's multiple ways of getting uh, a maximum heart rate. But the, a, a good guesstimate of getting an idea of what your max heart rate is, is, is subtracting your age from 220. Uh, you can also get a VO2 max stress test. That's, that's much more technical, much more uh, extensive way of, of finding out just how anaerobically and aerobically fit you are. You could also do like an all out 400 meter on the track or an all out 800 meter on the track and immediately check your heart rate at the end of that particular effort. So, but when you're running indoors, at least with the American Heart Association, they recommend staying between like 50 to 70% of your maximum heart rate when you're running at a moderate intensity indoors. But on a treadmill, you gotta remember, indoors there's no wind resistance, so a lot of times you wanna, you know, at least over the years, I would always focus on at least a, a half to a 1% incline on the treadmill when I was running indoors. If you're 40, you wanna keep your heart rate between 90 to 126 beats per minute if you're staying between 50 to 70 percent of your maximum heart rate so again heart rate especially if you're training over hills or if you are uh, running in very hot conditions heart rate will drastically change okay if you're running up a hill it's natural for the the heart rate to go way up okay if you're running downhill it's going to drop so when you're running over you know hilly terrains you don't really if you're running over hilly terrain you don't want to start running much faster going downhill just to to maintain that heart rate you were you were running on the flat it's naturally going to go much lower when you're going downhill and it's going to go naturally go much higher as you're going uphill um, of course you definitely want to also train at vo2 max rate so anywhere from 95 to 100 percent of your maximum heart rate you do want to get accustomed to training for longer periods of time at your anaerobic threshold which is you know anywhere from around 85 to 92 percent of your maximum heart rate the best middle to long distance runners are great runners for a reason they're spending more time each week around 40 percent of their weekly volume running around their lactate threshold their anaerobic threshold uh, capability so they make it look easy for a reason it's not just because they're Kenyan or American or Ethiopian or other top runners from around the world it's because they're running more of their weekly volume at a higher intensity than you are, okay? Yes, they are, they may have some genetic talent, but I've known plenty of runners over the years who didn't have a lot of genetic talent that still ran world-class times, national class times, because they had that desire and drive and commitment to their particular race, and they were willing to focus on preparing for that event for a long enough period of time. There's not a lot of people that really want to train hard for for track races and road races for a decade or more okay other people there's people naturally have other things in their lives and you just because you're going to school full-time or you're you have family responsibilities 
you have to decide yourself how badly you want success. And I'm not just talking about running, I'm talking about anything in your life, okay? You have a choice. It's either be, be average, be good, or be great. And greatness is not fun. Greatness, the, 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 the path to greatness takes an immense amount of work. Okay, as far as a runner, you know, I, I didn't have a great deal of talent, but I trained from 1992 until 2018 when I retired from elite level running. It took several years to get to a point where I could uh, compete close to the elite level, right at the elite level. And, and so, again, you have to decide how badly you want to prepare for your races and how badly you want success. As far as heart rate is concerned, Yes, you definitely still want to train outdoors, but sometimes it's important to get indoors and, and get on the treadmill. Do spend, if you're running, say, twice per week on the treadmill, run at least one of those two workouts at at least a 0.5, but preferably at 1%. That's going to equal running outdoors. It's going to also equal out the lack of wind resistance that, that we have running indoors on a treadmill. But I definitely think it's it's important to run a little faster inside on the treadmill uh, versus running outdoors because again, on a treadmill you have the set pace. If you want to run five minute mile repeat miles on the tr on the treadmill, you can lock that in. If you want to do a tempo run at say like seven minute mile pace, you can lock that in on the treadmill, and it's it's just key on staying as relaxed as you can and make and monitoring the amount of muscular tension you're feeling as you're as you're running. It's very easy to stay relaxed when you're running at slower paces, but it's really an art form to run at very high intensities and to consciously tell yourself to relax. Your shoulders, you know, as we, we as middle to long distance runners, once lactic acid rises, obviously the body needs much more oxygen capability that requires much more oxygen the faster we run uh, due to ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And so it's very important to continually practice uh, maintaining your your confidence and maintaining your your ability to stay as relaxed as you can when you're running, especially at faster paces. But don't think that running on a treadmill is any less of a workout than running outdoors. Okay, a lot of athletes get too focused on that. They think like, well, I don't, really don't want to run on a treadmill because it's not really going to be as much of a workout as if I were outside. Always running outside is the better option because you definitely want to get you want to be in the conditions. Okay, you're gonna you're not gonna be able to run on a treadmill in a race. Okay, it may be raining outside, it may be super hot, it may be windy, it may be cool, and you want to make sure that you're training in those types of conditions. But again, sometimes you've got to work smarter rather than harder. And working smart sometimes is getting on a treadmill when it's super hot out and you have a tempo run or track workout or interval workout you had planned, it's much better to do that on a treadmill um, rather than going outdoors and running much, much slower because the conditions are either super cold, super or dangerous or super hot um, and, and, and really getting a much better workout on the treadmill. But focus on your heart rate, focus on getting, you know, spending some time, one VO2 max workout per week, getting up closer to your max heart rate, doing and that can be in various, you can do repeat intervals on, on a treadmill, doing repeat 300s, repeat 400s, repeat miles, repeat two miles, um, long runs on the treadmill, but just make sure that you're always monitoring how you're feeling. So I really hope this video is helpful for you in terms of thinking about what type of heart rate you need to be running at on a treadmill. Um, if you're running at VO2 max and you're say your heart rate is around, your max heart rate is around 200, you wanna be around 95 to 100% of max heart rate when you're running at VO2 max. If you're running at lactate threshold, you wanna run around 85 to 92% of that max heart rate, okay? Leave me a question below. Let, if you have any questions regarding this topic or if you have any other things that are on your mind, feel free to leave me a comment. I'll definitely reach back out to you. Um, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so when I make a new video, you'll be notified of it. If there's anything else I can help you all out with, feel free to reach out to me. I'll definitely respond back to you. Check out the resources below. All my videos are there to help take you to the next level, as well as on rundreamachieve.com. And I wish you all the best in your training and racing, and I'll talk to you all in the next video.